Entrepreneurship Case Presentation, proudly presented by MCO. Thank you for being here today, and I want to thank our judges. I'll do a quick introduction. Sean Kelly from MCO, Paul Ganger from MCO, Joanne Fisher from Scotiabank, Jill Hobbs from the College of Agriculture and Bioresources, Dominic Thibodeau from Federated Cooperatives Limited, and Jacqueline Cook from Vendesta. Competitors, you have 23 minutes to present today. Immediately following your presentation, we ask you to please exit. I will be your timekeeper today. So from the first minutes, from the first word spoken, that's when the time will start. At five minutes, uh, the first five minutes are protected time. At the five minute mark, I will knock and hold up a sign saying unprotected time. At that time, the judges will be able to ask you questions. At the 20 minute mark, I will knock again and show the card protected time. No questions can be asked at that time. I will give you a countdown from the 20 minute to the 23 minute. Audience, no questions, comments, cell phones, or pictures are permitted during this time. Please ensure that your cell phones are off or on silent. We ask that the audience hold their applause till the end of the presentation, and at that time, you may applaud. At the end of the presentation, we ask the audience to file up quick, as quick as possible. This allows our judges to be able to score, or score, <laughs> do their scorecards. Just give me one minute. I'll get it started. I want to confirm that your team K. That's correct. Judges team K. When you're ready. <clears throat> Good afternoon, investors. We are extremely excited to be in front of you here today. My name is Mike, and these are my business partners, Jeff and Sony. We all understand that technology today is an extremely useful tech tool in terms of business. It helps us enhance communication, it helps us streamline business processes, and essentially increase efficiency. I was a member of the Canadian Forces Reserves for six years, and one thing they always mentioned to me was the power of effective communication, and how that is the most powerful weapon on the battlefield. The same thing can be applied to the business world. We've identified that there will be $344 million injected into the residential housing developments by the Saskatchewan government this year alone. This, of course, will attempt to build 12,600 new homes with the goals of creating a low cost and low maintenance goal in order to have readily, readily available housing for citizens. However, there's a problem that arises with all these new developments, and that's that they require extremely large amounts of capital input as well as human capital. And additional tools and communication and such can be, become cumbersome. Time consuming, um, excuse me, time consuming things such as workers that are on the site who need to go send for a runner in case they need some help for any, any sort of thing can reduce efficiency in the terms of um, creating uh, a very streamlined business process in developing these households. So if I can refer you to the screen, our mission is to provide contracting professionals a mechanism to increase efficiency in communication when on the job site. Thank you, Mike. Now, have you ever had to explain to a friend how to do something on the computer over the phone? It can be really challenging sometimes, even the simplest task, just for the sake that you can't see exactly what they're looking at. So what we've developed is the garden helmet, which will allow teams of skilled and unskilled laborers to communicate effectively through the use of audio and video. Uh, so we've done this by integrating a camera as well as an earpiece right into a headset. And audio communication will be able to be done between helmets, but video communication can actually be done at relay to a computer or a tablet by another worker or even something like a lead supervisor or a contractor as well. 
Um, so contracting firms will be able to purchase these products for these employees. They'll deploy the helmets out to their workers. And using the earpiece and speaker, they will communicate to their colleagues to streamline uh, the processes that they do while they're constructing these houses. Um, one of the use cases for this is, as an example, if a plumber is working on a particular job and he runs into a certain situation that has to do with something with electrical, the electrician might not actually be on the job site. He'll actually be able to refer and look exactly at what he's, uh, what he's working at and the electrician will be able to look back and say, you know what, we need to change the process, hold off, I'll come, we'll actually fix it this way. Um, so we expect each of these units to cost about $65.10. We are going to be using a bulk purchase program as well, uh, but we've, uh, for our models, we've assumed that the price is going to be $149 per unit. Thank you, Jeff. The actions that Jeff, Mike, and myself will be undertaking to operate this business are grounded in three elements that will ultimately allow us to achieve excellence as a startup operation. We are going to be taking a focus on the innovative technology incorporated in our product straight from the prototyping stage. We are going to be taking a focus on the connections and relationships that we build with the businesses that we target and distribute our product through. And finally, we are going to be taking a focus on the exploration of new markets for expansion to generate additional revenue streams and ultimately gain economic prosperity. However, in order for us to make this happen, we are here today asking you for an investment of $500,000 in exchange for a 30% stake in our business. We are projecting our return to be $2.4 million at the end of year five, growing your initial investment by 3.9 times. Now, Mike, Jeff, and myself will also be injecting funds of $100,000 each into this business, but percentage stakes aside, we are partners in this venture. And so we want to take you on as an advisory board in order to use your industry knowledge and insight in order to gain a better understanding of the industry that we are going to be competing in, not only to grow your return, but to realize our vision for this business. And so now at this time, I would like to open up the floor for any questions that you might have. Well, the idea is that the user will all be or already be wearing the helmet, and so it's an extremely quick way to reach the supervisor or reach um, reach a coworker in a time of need, or just essentially if you would like to communicate with them. So with the extent of taking out your iPhone and using FaceTime, calling them, it's not as quick as essentially a radio would be. And so we're trying to integrate that type of visual and um, audio into the helmet of something that you're already wearing. What's, what's the platform for the communication? It's cellular, radio, <coughs> shortwave, or what are we talking about? So the audio frequencies will actually be done through radio waves. So as I said, the audio is actually going to be communicated between helmets just using traditional radio frequencies. Uh, for video, um, that's a little bit more complicated, but it will need to be relayed through something like a phone. Um, now, I know a lot of contract workers as well as skilled laborers, they don't necessarily have their phone on their person, but as long as it's within the vicinity, our helmets will be able to work through that as well. Can you talk to uh, the risk in something like this? There are some remote diagnostic tools for doctors specifically, and they're running into a lot of bond and insurance issues. What is the same implication between contractor and supervisor in this type of relationship? So some of the main risks that we see uh, associated with the implementation of this product, uh, just to get to your question, so we are looking at things like such as defects or some type of malfunction happening with the product as what you are suggesting. And so what we are going to do is ensure that we do have the proper legal work in place as well as warranties and insurances that are offered to our consumers in order to make sure they are not harmed by the use of our product. So how do you plan your market? Like what's your <coughs> So we'll just have Sony run through the implementation here. So 
So in uh, order to bring this product to market, we are going to ensure that we do take the necessary actions to establish our business uh, right from day one within the four month period, um, as well as establish an office space, and then again, just get onto that legal work to ensure that we do have all of our bases covered. We are going to be working with a team of manufacturers, engineers, and designers to ensure that we do correctly prototype this product, and we are looking at the highest quality technology in order to have our product be functional to its proper extent. Uh, rolling forward, we are going to be taking a focus on doing things within the marketing and knowledge realm. And so we want to attend industry conferences to broaden our knowledge about this industry, as well as attend trade shows, so that before we launch and bring this product to market, we do have a deeper understanding of the market that we are going to be competing in. We are going to be creating uh, additional print materials to distribute to things such as contractor magazines, um, as well as to targeted businesses. And so we are looking to essentially target those large contracting companies, such as the ones that are connected to MCO. And so something that we have been discussing is an exclusive distribution partnership with MCO, knowing that they have upwards of 30,000 businesses that they partner with that employ between zero to 100 contractors. And so what we want to do is negotiate with them in terms of co-marketing in order to tap into their customer base and allow them to gain an advantage with our product as we grow our business. Uh, concluding our first year, we are going to begin meetings with MCO as well as additional contracting businesses that will be able to see the value in our product. Uh, we are going to be doing trial runs with these companies before we begin sales. And so what we want to do is give them out a complimentary free test run of our product so that they are able to get behind the value that we are offering as well as to establish a foothold in the marketplace before we begin to sell. So this, this puts us in manufacturing, is that right? That's correct. So we'd be, we'd be a manufacturer now, not just a distributor. That's correct. Okay. Can you show us what $500,000 is, please? Yep, absolutely. Uh, so the $500,000 is going to be broken up into a couple main categories. The biggest one is going to be R&D. So we're going to be using about $250,000 for that. Uh, we, there is going to be a bit of legal work in, to ensure things like liability as well as all of our bases are covered. Uh, we do have a small initial cost of insurance, about $6,000, but that will increase as our projected sales increase. And we do want uh, our website platform to be developed as well. That way, um, uh, coworkers can actually view whatever it is that's going on on these helmets. Um, so to take a look at our income statement, statements, we don't actually uh, sell anything in the first year. Uh, year two is when we actually roll out and start begin, begin selling these units out. Um, we only project to sell about 6,000 units within the first year. Um, so that's bringing in about $894,000 of revenue. Um, and going forward, um, the only additional costs are just increase in our salaries given that uh, the business is doing well. Um, as you can see, the $500,000 does turn out to be 396% increase from what um, you guys initially uh, give us, um, but it, that would be your return at the end of the five years. Um, in case our projected sales aren't what we assume, we do have a slow adoption strategy, which means that if we only attain 70% of our expected sales, we are actually still gonna grow your money 200%. Uh, 200%. Um, uh, how we do that, we don't want to change anything in terms of marketing. We are hiring sales staff and an IT team to make sure that these products work 100% and the people using them are trained properly on how to use them. Um, but we are going to be cutting our salaries in order to make sure that the business thrives and you guys still have a, a healthy investment as well. What do you propose to keep uh, the contractors at bay or the uh, competitors at bay? Um, this, uh, We'll just have Sony run us through the competition analysis. So the main competitors that we see us ourselves competing with uh, in operating this venture are just the traditional hard hats that are being used currently by the contractors. And so while they do have, of course, the additional safety functionality, they are, however, in our age of instant gratification, not offering these wearers an additional value proposition. 
Um, as well, we are going to be competing with uh, the mobile communications that they are using on the job sites, such as things like FaceTime or cell phones or walkie-talkies and things like that. And so we see our competitive advantage lying in the fact that we are rolling the benefits and function of these products all into one unit. And so a risk that is associated with this, however, is something like a competing business imitating this technology and this product and launching it to their consumer segments. And so what we are going to do in order to mitigate that is just have our um, legal work and patents in place in order to stop these businesses from copying our model. As well, we do expect to capitalize on a first mover advantage, seeing as there is not currently a product that does exist such like this uh, in our market. Can you speak to the, um, just back to Sean's point, the connectivity, so even things like Apple Watch require a Bluetooth connection anchored to a phone to transmit that. You can do that with radio on a sound, but what are you going to use for visual and uh, for the video component of that? Uh, so for the video component, um, there are other devices that can connect to things like tablets and phones, uh, not through Bluetooth. Bluetooth is actually too slow, right? So, uh, but one thing that is fast enough is Wi-Fi, and pretty much any phone on the market now is capable of actually producing a personal hotspot. Um, that's actually how we would plan to use those devices. So it would still be anchored to a smart device. Do you just that's right. Yeah. So maybe I wasn't clear, but to do any kind of video communication, it would be done relayed through a phone. result in significant data charges though, you know, when you look at the cost to the consumer, has any thought been put into what, what that might look like? Or If you look at typical phone plans in this day and age, a lot of them will come with unlimited data, in which case the unlimited hotspot, or the, the, the hotspot rather, would be essentially included in the plan. <laughs> However, it would be up to the business in order to determine how they would use it. Have you been able to monetize what what's the benefit what's the benefit to the contract so how many problems that they have uh, what the cost of those issues are how often they have like what kind of how did you get to how are we going to sell this is the question what's the value problem? i mean just as an example um, let's say a plumber was working on a particular part of a home that's being built and they notice the situation that the electrical is not quite done and they wouldn't be able to run the pipes through that particular part of the home because another piece isn't finished yet. Um, they might need to bring that electrician in, right? And if you just consider the downtime of that, the communication, having the electrician come in, technically the plumber has to completely stop what they're doing, which is lost time ultimately, mm -hmm. right? So I think for a price of $150, I'm not too sure how much plumbers charge, but they charge quite a bit. I think for an hour of work just to fix a leaky faucet can sometimes cost $200, $300, right? So I think the value is there, right? Is that it, it, it just streamlines the process of actually constructing the house because um, rather than having the electrician come in, the plumber himself will actually be able to show the electrician exactly what's wrong and be able to communicate what's, what's, what should be done next. Are you, and suggesting that the plumber would fix the problem with the electrician problem. So the idea is that we're just going, we're, our, our concept is to increase communication between members on the same team in the sense that if there is an issue that somebody cannot solve and it needs to be related to somebody who's, for example, a supervisor, that will be done visually and through an, an earpiece in order to help them guide, guide them through that. And so that will save lost time in the sense that they don't have to leave the job site in order to get this person if they aren't on the job site, for example, and essentially increase efficiency. And it will also allow the person who was making the call to learn what they're doing on the job as well. So there's that value add. So then in, in terms of quantifying the cost of the problem that you're solving with this product, how did you land on your uh, sell price of about $149? We've identified that a 149 unit, or rather $149 per unit to sell to a business is reasonably inexpensive considering the benefits and how much these, um, these businesses will relay on safety and increased efficiency as a communication and that type of thing. In terms of monetizing our, our value, we don't have the exact numbers. However, at our next meeting, we will have that exact number for you.
How did you guys come up with your sales growth? You guys start off with 6,000, I think it was 6,000 units, then it seemed like it dramatically increased after that to 15,000, so you more than doubled it, so it seems that. So what basis are you using the sales growth? Like what, what kind of stats are you using to come up with the sales growth? <coughs> yep. So taking a look at the revenue model, we do only project to do about 6,000 units within the second year. Uh, so again, that's um, after we've tested the market within Saskatchewan and um, contacted through EMCO. Really, we're going to be distributing primarily uh, in the province of Saskatchewan. So um, in year three, the reason for the growth is because we actually want to expand through the, uh, all of Western Canada as well. And we find that there will be a lot of use for this in other industries as well. Um, you know, commercial contractors will be able to use this. If you take a look at any labor intensive job where communication is key, um, things such as mining, things such as the oil industry, even things such as forestry as well, we believe that this device will actually be able to be used in, in many industries rather than just the residential market as well. So the key is to begin selling to what we've identified the opportunity to be here in Saskatchewan and then expand as from there. So why did you choose EMCO as your channel in this personal protect, PPP, personal protection product? What, where is, where did, how did you make that connection? What, what's the thing that's for you? So EMCO, we, we understand, is an extremely large wholesaler and we know that they have customers up at what Sony says, the 30,000 mark, and ranging from zero or sorry, one to 100 employee firms. And just being able to have a distribution channel such as them would be ideal in the sense that they, the, end, the end user of the contractors are our target market, and that's who they service. So in order to first get uh, the contractors on board, we are going to start off by doing a number of print media and a number of print media uh, materials. Excuse me, print media materials in order to first establish the word about our product and get these businesses in line. We are going to be making a number of contacts to the businesses that we target, such as MCO as well as those of other contractors, in order to identify the ones that we would like to first initially do our trial runs with. So aside from going to those conferences and trade shows to first get that background knowledge, we are going to be then distributing the complimentary products as well, just to have them really reap the value of our product before we go into the partnerships that we are conducting with Demco in order to tap into their market and then continue our sales. And so before we begin our closing remarks, I would just like to take your attention to some of the milestone actions that we see making a very significant impact on our business processes. And so that first begins with the completion of a successful prototype within the first year of our operations. We are planning to conduct our first sale in year two with, again, just that $83.9 of unit margin per unit. We are going to be achieving our break-even sales in year three with these sales of 8,050 units and then achieving revenues upwards of $5 million by the end of our year five of operations, finally valuing this company at $8.2 million. Thanks. And so the value we provide to the contractors, of course, is that they can have enhanced communication, not only audio, but also visual on the job site. And this, of course, creates efficiencies and streamlines their processes. So. In terms of beginning in the residential housing market here in Saskatchewan, 12,600 houses will be built this year. However, that is how we would like to springboard this type of a product because only one year is extremely short term speaking. As Jeff mentioned, we would like to expand to other subsequent industries such as labor intensive um, mining, oil, and that's in that type of an industry as well. And of course, I imagine you, you investors have been here today listening to several other types of products about how we are going to conquer the housing market in Saskatchewan, but the reason why this one is so special is because it uses that springboard off into subsequent industries. 
And those, once again, creating efficient business processes and creating a, more, a safer work environment, not only for the employee wearing it, but also other employees is extremely important as well. And so with that, investors, we would like to thank you so much for your time today. Jeff, Sony, and myself would love to answer any further questions at our next meeting. Thank you.